having grown up on the coast of Texas and lived on the Gulf Coast of Florida, and having survived one direct hurricane hit to my church and my home in Naples, Florida. I mean, the kind of direct hit where the guy from the Weather Channel was literally broadcasting from a block away from the church. That's when I knew how bad it would be. That when a new hurricane season begins, which one just has, I have almost this post-traumatic stress disorder response. Each time I hear the words hurricane season, named storm, cone of uncertainty, there's always a pit in my stomach. And this week, as the first named storm of the season has been identified, I felt that same anxiety all over again. And yet I am fortunate while Hurricane Irma did hit when I lived in Naples, I had very little damage to my home and the church, the damage that the church sustained was quite manageable. We were back functioning very quickly. We did, however, the first Sunday after the storm have to worship without electricity, which made for a rather warm morning of worship. But part of my memory of the storm has very little to do with the physical damage. It has to do with how interrupted my life was. It's typical that each year I take time away toward the end of the summer to catch my breath and clear my head before the next season begins. I look forward to that time all year. And in 2017, when Hurricane Irma hit, that was going to be a very special break since I was officiating the wedding of friends in Tuscany and planning to enjoy time in Italy. Someone has to do it. It might as well be me. You may remember that just before Hurricane Irma hit, Hurricane Harvey hit my hometown of Houston, Texas, So while in Italy, I was watching weather reports to see what damage there was and and constantly in touch with friends and family worrying about their safety. And as if a time in Italy couldn't be ruined more than having to be on the phone due to a natural disaster, the relationship that I was in ended while we were on vacation together in Italy. And then I returned early from my trip turned on my phone as the plane touched down, only to discover that Hurricane Irma was pointed directly at Florida. It was one more punch to the gut. I was home long enough to unpack and repack clothes since I had made a flight reservation months before to see family at the end of my vacation time. I made the decision to go ahead with those plans Now, when you fly from Southwest Florida to Houston in the summer, you have the delightful opportunity of having to go through Orlando first. The way you get to Orlando from Southwest Florida is by a turboprop plane, where I'm pretty convinced they had to leave some of our suitcases off because we were going to weigh too much and never get off the ground. And in a turboprop plane, as we are headed there, the outer bands of the tropical weather had already started to impact the area. And so it was one of the bumpiest rides I've ever experienced. I'll tell you more about that later. And if you've never had the delightful opportunity to fly through Orlando, I must say it is a very special experience to fly through Orlando during a hurricane evacuation. When approximately 500 million Disney tourists from all over the world are trying to flee Orlando at the same time you are. I do not recommend it. I simply remember thinking that my life felt physically, emotionally, spiritually interrupted. Everything was out of my control. 
It reminded me of a time in my life when I reflected to a friend one night, confessing that I had been through a difficult time, and I commented, I feel like I just wasn't in control anymore. To which my friend grinned and said, or maybe you were reminded that you were never in control in the first place. And so this morning, as we read one of the miracle stories of Jesus, I wonder if a miracle might best be defined as a time when God interrupts our orderly existence with something wonderful that doesn't fit our notion of orderliness. Take today's miracle story of an unnamed woman who has so much faith, she believes that if she can only touch the hem of Jesus' robe, she will be made well. I don't know if you have ever thought about this story, but I have and often wished that I could have that kind of faith. The woman did not believe that she needed to talk to Jesus, to have the attention of Jesus, to have him ask God or to pray with him. This woman believed that Jesus' power to heal was so great that all she had to do was touch the robe. She wanted her life as she knew it to be interrupted. And in the summer of 2017, I wanted my life to be left uninterrupted. I wanted the perfect vacation, the perfect relationship, and a storm-free life. And I bet I'm not the only one. We want to control our lives. And I think if we're honest, we'd like to control God. Because if we controlled God, we could get a miracle whenever we want one. But you see, miracle stories aren't about control. Miracle stories are about how God interrupts our lives with goodness and with grace. Even amid our pain, although we can't always see it, God is at work. Oh, remember that infamous turbo prop plane ride? As we were bouncing up and down and side to side, making our descent into Orlando, I remember two things questioning every decision I had ever made and praying under my breath, please, God, just let us get safely on the ground. I was so focused on the hope that I couldn't think of much else. And so as we made our descent into Orlando International Airport, we broke through the clouds the plane stabilized, and I gave up my death grip on the seat handrest. As I felt my body relax so slightly, I heard the most delightful sound. About two rows behind me, there was a small child who was interacting with their parent. And they were giggling and laughing every time the plane bounced or went side to side. With each bump of the plane, they would squeal with delight as if they were riding a roller coaster at an amusement park. And despite my fear and my sadness and my anxiety, I realized that I was doing something that I didn't think was possible in that moment. I began to smile. Isn't the laughter of a child one of the most healing things in the world? 
And so that's my hope. That's my prayer for each of us this morning. That we can lean into the miracles of our lives and of our faith. And that we will see miracles, both great and small, at work all around us. Knowing that sometimes the greatest miracles occur when God interrupts our lives and reminds us that goodness and grace abound. May we live lives where we too are told your faith has made you well. Amen.